Pasto's Biology, Biology 2115, Human Anatomy and Physiology 2. My email is jpasto at mgc.edu. My website is mgc.edu slash faculty slash jpasto. The cardiac cycle is a heartbeat, and it lasts approximately eight-tenths of a second. The upper part of this graph represents events in the atria, and the lower part events in the ventricles. If the block is shaded, this is systole, and if it's clear, it's diastole. Systole is contraction, and diastole is relaxation. In the atria, in the first tenth of a second, the atria are in systole. And then for the remaining tenths of a second in the cardiac cycle, the atria are in diastole. In the first tenth of a second in the ventricles, the ventricles are in diastole. But in the second, third, and fourth tenth of a second, the ventricles are in systole. In the remaining tenths of a second in the cardiac cycle, the ventricles are in diastole. Notice that the heart rests more than it works. The heart makes essentially two sounds, a lub and a dup sound, or S1 and S2. Notice that the lub sound comes shortly after the beginning of ventricular systole, and the dub sound occurs shortly after the end of ventricular systole. As you'll see later, these sounds are due to several things. Partly the actual contraction of the cardiac muscle, to the closing of the valves, and to the turbulence that the blood makes when the valves open or close. Let's look at the changes in ventricular volume. At the beginning of the cardiac cycle, the volume in the ventricles is roughly 140 milliliters. It rises by the end of the first tenths of a second to roughly 160, and then drops in the second tenths of a second back to roughly 140. There's a very brief period when there's no change, and then the ventricular volume drops very sharply into the six tenths of a second, to about 80 milliliters. Now we're using average figures. Then the ventricular volume rises in the remaining two-tenths of a second of the cardiac cycle back to the approximate 140 that we began with. The initial rise in ventricular volume is due to blood flow into the ventricles from the atria. It occurs during atrial systole. The phase in which there's no change in ventricular volume, indicated by number two, is due to the period of time when which, during which the AV valves and the semilunar valves are closed, so no blood flows in or out of the ventricles. The sharp drop in ventricular volume is due to blood flowing out of the ventricles during ventricular systole. Number four, the another period in which no change takes place, again is due to no flow in or out because the atrioventricular and the semilunar valves are closed. Finally, five represents flow into the ventricles, raising the volume, occurring during ventricular diastole. Is it correct to say that the role of the atria is to pump blood into the ventricles? No. Look, most of ventricular filling occurs when the atria are not contracted. They occur during ventricular diastole. Something like 80% of ventricular filling occurs during this time. Remember, fluids flow from high to low. That is, there must be a difference in pressure 
between atria and ventricles in order for blood to flow into the ventricles. Notice, however, this difference in pressure is not created by atrial systole. We'll address this more a little later. So, what is the role of the atria? During ventricular systole, blood flow into the ventricles is prevented because the ventricles are contracting, and yet blood flow continues into the heart. So, to maintain the continuous blood flow into the heart, the atria serve as collecting chambers. So that's the role of the atria, to allow for continuous blood flow to the heart.